I love it. I love it. Okay. So you get to, you, you do that. And then you and I met when you were finishing grad school, because I yes. got to see your showcase. So just yeah. talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to transition into your show and then Absolutely. writing this writing process here. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, so post undergrad, um, I actually stopped acting for a while because I was excited and energized about directing and writing. And so I just started shooting short films. Like I wrote nice. some really bad short films, <laughs> but I was proud of myself because I put them up, you know, I sort of self-produced them. Yes. I them yes. And you learn so much in that process. Like you become a location scout, you're a casting yes. director, you're a wardrobe and costume designer. Nice. You know, one of my films, my act, one of my actors dropped out. I had to step into the role. Like it was really a, a crash course. And I was doing that for a couple of years and I was really excited about that. Um, and then I met a friend of mine who was teaching an acting course in Philly. He was like, you should take this class. And I was like, no, I'm not really not interested. He's like, no, just trust me on this take. So I was like, okay, whatever. I've been missing acting. Let me try. And that really re-energized me back into the craft of acting. And, um, and he, at the time, was applying for graduate schools. And he was encouraging me to do so as well. And I was on the fence between, like, going to film school for directing. Okay. He was like, just try, like, just this year, apply to acting programs and see if you get in one. And let the chips fall where they may. And if it doesn't work out, then go to school. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I applied to a couple of schools, got some offers, ultimately ended up um, settling at UC San Diego in their MFA acting program. Mm. Um, which, which is a really prestigious and highly competitive, very, very hard yeah. program to get into. It's, 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 it, I had to cut Come my on now, don't think it all. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's. It is. It's one of those programs, you know, they come up with their list every year of like, you know, what are the top or most competitive programs. And I was fortunate enough to 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 have offers from a couple of those schools, you know, um, and and my experience at UC San Diego, I think, which was so one of the, the takeaways for me was. It was a training ground for me that because because there there's every discipline in theater that's that are. Um, uh, master's level seeking, you know, uh, students in each of these disciplines. So there's, their actors, their playwrights, their stage managers, their every area of design, mm -hmm. you know, so, so we're working collaboratively with our peers and you're, you're, you're developing a network while you're in school yes. and the language to be able to communicate across these different disciplines yes. while you're in school. And there's also um, my co-creator uh, and director of The Bitter Game. She is a um, faculty member, playwriting faculty member at UC San Diego. And she brought with her a wealth of knowledge from like the sort of devised theater making world. Mm -hmm. um, and she created a course, an interdisciplinary course where all of these different disciplines were working together to create work from the ground up. So it sort of cracked open the way that, you know, the concept of how you can build theater um, in a sort of non-traditional way. And that sort of laid the foundation for me, like for she and I to be able to work together individually to create the bitter game. The play was created for an immersive theater festival. So that was, that was the thing, like, you know, an immersive, you know, site specific piece of theater mm. that can exist, you know, sort of anywhere you can imagine it anywhere on the grounds of the school in the La Jolla Playhouse um and and i'll just mention to our viewers right now we're talking about keith's show the bitter game and you'll you'll see uh some clips from it some pictures from it as we go along talking about it but we've already launched into this which was your was this your thesis for grad school or this was something you created afterwards it wasn't my thesis it okay. was something like again i mean and i know you were talking to your folks about this all the time but resourcefulness right like as like bring you it. just bring you it have to create, you have to create opportunities for yourself you know um and the way i see it is in order to be fulfilled you know there are opportunities that come when you're least expecting it and you're like where the hell did that come from <laughs> but a lot of the times it's they are like you said they're 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 kind of sort of the fruition of what you the, the groundwork and the seeds that you've yes. already sort of planted yep. um and so there was um 
they the La Jolla Playhouse does this biannual. I think it's annual now. They they might have beefed it up, but it was a biannual site specific um, theater festival. And the first year that it happened was the first year that I came in as a mm -hmm. as a first year uh, grad student. Okay. So the first week on campus, I experienced that festival. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cut to a year and a half later, they had an open call for submissions because they were reing up, re upping for the next festival. Maybe it was a year later. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, there was a play that I wanted to direct. There was a play that I wanted to direct by Terrell McCraney mm -hmm. um, called The Brother Sides, which is like still to this day, one of my like, it's like seminal pieces, like really foundation, changed the foundation of how I experienced theater and what I could what I saw that theater and storytelling could do um, and I was really excited about it but another regional theater in the city had produced it maybe like a year or two previously okay so I had put together like a small little pitch and then if you advance you have a meeting and you sit down with the artistic director the associate artistic director and the producer of the festival to talk a little further so they passed me on to this next round I got into the meeting and like this was like now, what was happening in my own personal life uh, alongside this was, um, was um, Mike Brown had been murdered a couple months previously. Mm. Um, and I'm sitting in this, I'm sitting in this conversation with these, uh, with the theater and, you know, they're like, we really love the concept and we really love what you wanted to do with this piece. But they had reservations and rightfully so from a business perspective of like, how could they sell this if the show had just been done? Like they were trying to figure mm. out how, how they would, you know, and like, you know, and, and if, this, if the community was ready for this story again. And when I heard that question as, as benign as it was, it clicked for me in a different way. Cause I was like, you know, well, we don't question when like, when we see people tell me the same like, story dream let's, or, let's just... car or another, you know, whatever check right. off we don't question whether or not we need it again it's just yeah. because it's in the canon and i was like this is the experience that i'm living every day these characters and the story that these characters are telling is relevant to me every day and here i was here is how it's reflecting in the world and here was here's what's happening in me personally mm. and it was from that conversation they were like okay we're gonna pass on the play because <laughs> because we're gonna pass on it they were like but, thank you for all of that but we gotta right. pass okay but they were like but we we are really invested in you and we're really invested in, in what you have to say in your perspective. And if you are open to it, we would love to create a space in the festival for you to create something of your own. Wow. So it was like totally I didn't realize it came together like that, Keith. Yes. It was totally something that I wasn't expecting to happen, but mm -hmm. you know, they they created that space and I took advantage of their offer. I, you know, I accepted their offer and and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> it is a beautiful history. I did not know that it went down like that. This is a powerful play. Um, would you be willing to do your mom for like three lines? Oh my I, God. I, you don't have, I'm, I just love, like every time. <laughs> I haven't touched that material in like. Come on now. Like, you know, give us like three lines. I just um, love her. I gotta find my way into this. It's okay, if you um, can, but come on now. You, if you're a real actor, you gonna do it. I'm she just put me on the spot. She just put me on the spot. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh uh, drop it. Mm hmm. Now pick it up and put it in the trash. And quit dragging them feet like you ain't got no damn sense. Now, how many times I got to tell you, don't be out here acting like a damn fool? Uh uh. Mom, you tripping? Okay, I'm going to tell you why I'm tripping. Because every day when I'm looking on the news, what I see, little boys and little girls just like you being shot and killed by the police. Why? Because they was in the wrong place at the wrong time playing with a damn toy gun. Now, I don't want to hear no more. Get on upstairs and get ready for dinner. Mm-hmm. I know you sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that piece, that that part in the play is, you know, this mother, you know, single mother raising 
you know, her, her children, she finds her youngest son. He has an infatuation with guns. He develops this infatuation with guns because of the cycle of violence that he sees constantly in his neighborhood. And she catches him with a toy gun and, and she has to really like, you know, slow him down and give him that talk, you know, mm -hmm. um, how it's different for him and he can't just play. Mm -hmm. um, and he can't play with certain kinds of things because it's different for him. Beautiful. Um, and, and, and this connects so much with who you are as a storyteller and the kind of uh, screenwriting you're going to do. Will you just also tell folks how the show began? Like, what was the first thing the audience experienced? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so a part of what I, and this again, man, has to, I want to say this, the artistic journey is not separate from the personal journey. Ooh, um, hold up, say it again. The artistic journey, I'm going to take it better. The artistic journey cannot be separate from the personal journey. It has, they have to work in conjunction with one another. And a lot of this piece for me was writing out my pain, yeah, but it was also me taking ownership of where I come from and like reframing everything that the world taught me I was supposed to think about it and be ashamed of certain things and really taking that and deciding to highlight it you know what I mean I grew up in North Philly like we talk about guns drugs violence all of the things you know all of the all of the the stuff that we that we know but there was also a lot of community and joy and revelry and fellowship that happened in my community like you know I didn't know that it was bad until I knew it was bad and that was when I was out, you know, once I got to college and stuff like that. So it's like the first part, the first moment that we experience in the bitter game is a block party. You know, the audience comes in and there's music playing and there's free beverages to take and there's snacks. And I'm walking around, I'm engaging with the audience because it's like, it's a celebration. Yeah. Like I remember, I remember those moments in my experience so vividly. And then later on in the show, like that moment of celebration and reverie is sliced in half by a moment of violence, unexpected violence. So it's like that du that duality, right? That juxtaposition of like joy and celebration and reverie with tragedy and pain that I was really wanting to convey mm. to the audience, you know, to paint a more, uh, a, a, a more human picture of mm. what it's like, you know, in certain- That's what you did. Yeah, you just, because we were, you know, I use audience loosely because we were the community, right? Like that's yeah. actually how it was. So pivoting into your screenwriting. Um...